guys welcome back to between the ropes tv wow what a night's boxing in leeds tonight put on by matchroom boxing obviously headlined by what a main event i mean it's been a great few weeks for the featherweight division hasn't it we had obviously the drama of wood and conlon a fortnight ago and i think i wouldn't have been alone in thinking nobody can top that or match it and you know josh warrington and kiko martinez tonight you know they've definitely given it a run for their money for those that don't know josh warrington has become a two-time ibf featherweight world champion and what a start it was you know in our preview we we questioned whether he had what it takes to really bounce back from that lara defeat because he didn't get the opportunity in the rematch in fairness to him uh with the cut it was taken out of his hands um and I think, you know, you'd have to be inhuman for that not to play on your mind. You know, it was just over a year ago, the defeat. And he's not had the chance to right that wrong. But my God, did he answer those questions tonight? He came out and he shots, he was measured. He was changing angles. He was landing and significant shots. I mean, he was putting a lot in. He got Martinez down in the first round, which was crucial. Martin has also sustained cuts from the, uh, an accidental clash of heads, although there were some cuts from the shots. Uh, he had one on the forehead above both eyes. And, you know, I think in fairness to Kiko, I think they were giving him problems, um, but taking nothing away from Josh Warrington, he was incredible tonight. The first two rounds in particular, he really did unload. I mean, some of the, I think it was at the end of the fourth round, he landed 110 shots. It was, you know, he's known for his engine. Uh, Josh Warrington and I, and I think I wouldn't be alone in questioning that at 31 years of age you know a couple of years of inactivity through the pandemic and whatnot would he still have that engine and don't get me wrong it was I, I heard an interview with him in the week and he said you know last time he fought Kiko he was throwing sevens and eights and he's a little bit more reserved a bit more mature and we saw that tonight you know he put a lot into the first two rounds and I think in the third and fourth slightly more reserved you know he was landing when he wanted to and do it a bit of a sustained attack but then also sitting back and having a having a little breather you know working a little bit off the jab what a performance uh, you know and it got to the seventh round and it was just a sustained attack and the referee waved it off i mean incredible the drama and what an atmosphere in fairness i know they're known for it aren't they up there in leeds but what an atmosphere they provided tonight. That You know, that arena was bouncing. And fair play to Kiko Martinez, because let's not forget, as world champion, he's gone there voluntarily. And I know he's done it before, but it's still, it's some atmosphere, it really is. So massive, massive shout out for Josh Warrington. And, you know, Kiko Martinez talked a lot in the build-up to this fight. You know, it was either win or retire. If he does retire, which I think at 36, that's now his 11th defeat. And don't get me wrong, he has only lost at the top level, but he's probably never going to climb the mountain that, you know, of being world champion again. So if he does retire, fair play to him. What a warrior. You know, he could have easily stayed down in the first, to be totally fair, and nobody would have criticised. But, you know, he, he went out on his shield tonight and stayed in there for as long as possible. Moving on, Ebony Bridges. A very controversial figure. We have made our views quite clear about her on this channel. You know, we're going to have to sit here and say that we we're wrong. Both Ray and I both said, you know, she fights like she relies on power, but doesn't really have the power. Uh, and in fairness, she's been working with Mark Tibbs uh, since Christmas. A lot's been made of that in the build up to this. Uh, and you know, hats off to her. She showed she showed clear improvements tonight. Work behind that job, jab a lot more, sorry. And you can see the improvements. It caused Roman problems. Uh, she's also crowned IBF bantamweight world champion. So wins a world title at the second time of asking it. And there's some big fights for her now. Um, you know, there's, there's obviously the Shannon Courtney rematch, which she did say, you know, Shannon needs to go and get a belt, which I think that'll obviously be Eddie Hearn and, and Shannon herself's plan. So, you know, it's a big potential unification. Uh, but you know, on tonight, Ebony Bridges, I think you couldn't you can't really fault her. Um, the one slight knock possibly would be the fact that as the rounds wore on, I, I mean, I personally gave uh, Maria Cecilia Roman the seventh, eighth, and ninth rounds purely because I think you know she surprised a lot of people with her game plan. I think everyone thought she'd box and pot shot. Uh, you know, they asked Sky Nicholson, and 
you know, that was the general consensus. And she didn't. She stayed there. They went toe to toe. And in fairness to Roman, when she when she threw shots, she had success. And I think that was quite a key thing. She, was, she just wasn't busy enough. But in fairness to Bridges, taking nothing away, how she worked off the jab. And then she was the more powerful fighter. Fair play to her. Um, and, you know, she, that's only the second time she's gone the 10-round championship distance. I think she needs more, blatantly needs more, because I think, you know, the engine started to run on fumes towards the end, which is actually what gave her a man uh, some of the later rounds. Scorecards a little bit wide. One was 100 to 91. I thought that was harsh. The other two were 97, 93, which, to be honest, that's that's probably fair and probably where it should be. Excited to see what's next from her. I just wish she'd wear some clothes to a weigh-in. Then the next big fight on the card, Maxi Hughes versus Ryan Walsh. Wow. The Indian summer, uh, as it's being called, for Maxi Hughes goes on. Sixth win on the bounce. Again, Sean O'Hagan, two wins for him tonight with Maxi and Josh. Uh, and he boxed really, really well. Uh, I was very impressed with him, to be totally honest. Um yeah, you know, it was calm, composed. Again, shot variety very well. And, you know, oh, that's a little bit of a blueprint that I think we've seen tonight with Sean O'Hagan, the fighters. You know, very measured, changing angles. Uh, and, you know, it's going to give anybody a tough night's work. It frustrated both Ryan Walsh and Kiko in the main event. Um, the one slight knock I would say, I think Maxi needs a big fight now. Because Ryan Walsh, you know, he's caught two divisions. But at 35, we did sort of query it on the preview. Is that just a natural jump, really? He's talked to himself about his brothers telling him to jump up for a while with the inactivity. 35 years old, probably just couldn't make featherweight anymore in reality. And at times, I wouldn't say he looked a spent force, but definitely on his way out. But again, take nothing away from Maxi Hughes because he's still got to be there. He's still out to box well, and he did all of that. So I want to see a big, big fight for Maxi Hughes next. Moving back down now... Dalton Smith, and I think tonight is possibly, he's got a big amateur pedigree, which, you know, gets talked about a lot on zone and by Eddie Hearn, but he's always labelled as a prospect, and I think tonight he goes from prospect to contender. You know, he beat Ray Moylet, beat him well as well, boxed off the back foot beautifully. Again, shot for, we've seen some really classy boxing tonight, and Dalton Smith was probably at the heights of that. Box beautifully off the bat foot. As I said, his shot selection was brilliant. Uh, and he just wore Moylet down. Uh, then we got we got to a bit of a bizarre seventh uh, round where Dalton Smith hit Moylet low. Uh, and he got two points took off him, which I think the commentator said was the first time that's happened since Mike Tyson took a chunk out of hand of a Holyfield's ear. Uh, and to be fair to Dalton Smith, it, he did hit him low. But it wasn't intentional. He'd gone low. Moylet came in high. It was just one of those, you know, every so often we see it in the sport, don't we? It's just a genuine, genuine accident. But no, brilliant performance from Dalton Smith. And then he, that was almost a test in itself because he had to show composure. The same thing happened again, although it was then on the replays, it was definitely on the belt. But Moylet, I think he was arguably looking for a little bit of a way out and trying to get him disqualified at this point because he'd been worn down. But Dalton Smith finished it in the 10th round, TKO, got a couple of knockdowns, and then Moylet's team threw in the towel. So big performance from Dalton, 10-0, eight stoppages now. It's tough to know how well, how fast to move a fighter of his calibre because he's a really classy fighter who can he can punch as well. But do you rush him? I mean, it, it must be tough to match make him, but you know, I'm excited to see what's next. We also got to see Sky Nicholson versus Bet Connolly. Now, this was this was added quite late. You know, Sky made her pro debut a couple of weeks ago over in uh, America. And, you know, she boxed really well tonight. Um, I would say, and I, I did tweet about it, I was a bit disappointed with Bet Connolly. Um, normally, you know, for three wins and 11 losses going in tonight, she she's a pressure fighter and she's better than her record suggests. You know, definite gatekeeper, but a tough night's work for anybody. And she didn't really come forward tonight. So I think that it wasn't quite the test that we hoped it would be for Sky Nicholson. But in fairness to Sky, she, again, she boxed beautifully. You know, she had a low guard for quite a lot of the fight, to be fair, because she just could. Her speed, her reflexes were superior to Beck's. 
and she was landing at will. Uh, she won 60 to 54, all six rounds. And I think the commentators were probably right. Beck Connolly's scheduled to fight in three weeks. And, you know, arguably she was in survival mode from very, very early on. I wouldn't say from the opening bell because she looked like she wanted to have a go the first minute or so. But, it, you know, she went into survival mode. But I'm excited to see what's next for Sky Nicholson. And it's another, you know, we've talked before about the lack of depth in women's boxing through no fault of their own. And, you know, this could be another world champion at quite an early stage. So I'm, I'm very, very, very excited for Sky Nichols in the future. We'll move on to before the bell to wrap this one up. Uh, and just very quickly, Callum French goes to 2-0, and got his first stoppage victory, so massive shout out to him. Mally Wright got his second win in the pro game. So, you know, it was a points win. But I think, you know, we're going to start seeing, you know... <laughs> There was a bit of spice in the build up to that this week. Excited to see what's next. And Corey O'Regan also got the win on points. He moved to six and zero. Oh. So a great night in Leeds tonight, guys. Um, I'm very excited. The featherweight division worldwide is absolutely on fire. But even in the UK, I mean, they they spoke to Josh Warrington and Lee Wood at the end, try, obviously trying to get them to build the unification next. And in massive respect to Lee Wood because he said, no, tonight's Josh's night. There's options, you know, let it settle and we'll talk. And Josh Warrington says he wants an away day. So I think I think the reality is we'll probably see that fight at the city ground. But obviously Josh Warrington's had a dream for a few years now to go to Vegas. Could we end up seeing a Mark Mugsayo unification or a Navarrete unification? Massively exciting times in the featherweight division. I can't wait. I'm going to wrap this one up here. If you haven't seen the Josh Warrington Kiko Martinez fight, guys, don't just take our word for it. Just get on it. It was an incredible fight. If you are new here, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we've got some really great content coming next week. So check it out.